So there's this ordinary kid, Kimito, studying in his... That's right, studying in his high school, like every other high school dude. Suddenly, one day, a group of big muscular guys kidnap Kimito. They drop him off at Seikane's girls' school, where only high-class noble girls study. These girls have no contact with the outside world in order to preserve their innocence. I bet we're going to see a lot of that innocence taken away by the end. <laughs> the refined head of maids called Miyuki says that Kimito will be attending this school from now on, and they have already taken permission from his parents as well. The principal explains that everyone in the school is female, from the students to the staff. So when these girls graduate and go out to the outside world, they struggle to adapt. So they brought Kimito so that the girls can use him as a sample to understand more about commoners and boys. Also, they thought that he liked men and was as straight as a curved croissant, as he spends a lot of time with other boys and hardly talks to other girls. Kimito replies that he's actually as straight as a baguette. They shouldn't challenge him or he'll pull out a sausage. He doesn't actually say that, but he probably wanted to. Miyuki warns him that if Kimito is really straight, then they'll have to cut off his sausage to prevent him from ruining the girl's innocence. So Kimito pretends to be a croissant for now. Kimito meets up with a few first-year girls, whose chairperson is a sweet and innocent girl named Reiko. Reiko and the other girls are surprised by Kimito's offhanded manner of talking and by his smartphone. When Kimito accidentally touches Reiko's hand, the new sensation causes her to almost faint. Suddenly, another girl named Aika takes him away. When Reiko and the others come out, Aika runs away because she does not like to socialize with him, for some reason. Yuki takes Kimito to his new room, which has been recreated to look exactly like the room in his house. Just then, Aika comes in and she's shocked to see the simple room of a commoner. She also wishes to be the most popular girl in school. However, Aika has a habit of speaking without thinking. She believes that the other girls will hate her for it, so she distances herself from them. So, she asks him to teach her how to be a proper commoner and opens the commoner club right there, with the two of them as members. The next day, their classes resume. Reiko turns out to be a model student, excelling at every subject in sport, thus gaining the admiration of the teachers and other students. Aika is, well, not as great. Later, Reiko admits that they all want to be friends with Aika, but she's always avoiding them. Then they eat in their fancy dining hall. Miyuki brings cup ramen for Kimito, and all the other girls are fascinated by it as they haven't even seen it before. They treat the cup ramen like it's baby Jesus or something. Meanwhile, Aika is eating alone in a secret place. That night, the girls organize a welcome party for Kimito. It's a fancy party with fancy clothes, fancy dance, fancy oxygen, and fancy music. Reiko asks for a dance, but Kimito is not a good dancer, and he knocks her out. Later, Kimito and Aika start the first activity of their commoners club. Aika spends the whole evening reading mangas, and she believes that all commoner high schoolers have superpowers. Ah, so young, so naive. So Kimito pretends to teach her how to stop time. He sits still so Aika believes him and she acts childishly, even lifting her skirt in front of him. She's then about to kiss him, but Kimito stops the act and gets a punch from her. That night, Reiko is coming out of her bath and anyone want to guess what happens? She runs into Kimito because, of course. Kimito runs away while Reiko starts developing the hots for him. She starts daydreaming right in the middle of class and looking forward to her marriage with him. One day, Kimito sees a little girl named Hakua scribbling on the ground. Suddenly, she removes her clothes. Kimito is shocked, so he takes Akua away to a safe place back in his room where he puts her clothes on her and feeds her. Suddenly, she starts scribbling while taking off her clothes. Aika chooses the perfect time to arrive and misunderstands him, calling him a pervert. Later, he takes Akua back to her lab where her maid reveals that Hakua is a child genius. The equations that she scribbles everywhere are used for breakthroughs in engineering, science, and mathematics, so the maids go around photographing them. The big lab building they're in right now is built from one of Akua's patent income. Kimito is about to leave, but Akua has already become attached to him, which shocks all her maids because Akua is usually so antisocial. Turns out Hakua may look like a child, but she's actually 14 years old, almost the same age as Kimito. Later, Kimito runs into a girl named Karen, who acts like a literal Karen and swings her sword at him. She chases after Kimito, and in her confusion, she accidentally cuts the clothes of the other girls, and Kimito's as well. So, he forcefully stops her, but this noble hero sacrifices his underwear for that. Karen sees his sausage and collapses. Seeing what Kimito did, she starts believing that all commoners are dangerous and powerful, so she submits herself to him. Later, Aika organizes a party and plans to send invites through email. However, everyone needs to have smartphones for that. So, Kimito asks Akua to make phones for them, which Akua accepts. She sits on Kimito's lap, so Aika and Karen get jealous of her. The next day, Reiko invites Kimito to a tea party. But he has to decline as it clashes with his commoners club party planning with Aika. Reiko and her friends start wondering if there is something going on between Kimito and Aika. But Reiko does not think that it is true and she yells at everyone to shut up. All her friends are shocked. Even Reiko is shocked at herself. 
Reiko's friend K cries in class, and Reiko herself does not come to class. So Aika offers to use her party as an event where Reiko and K can make up. So they begin the after-school commoner experience party where these elite girls can experience things that commoner girls do on a daily basis. Kimito brings in Reiko dressed like a normal girl, speaking in modern English slang and using a smartphone. Everyone is amazed by Reiko. They all also get phones and Reiko sends a message to them all. Then she apologizes to Kei who forgives her. They take a picture together. All of them. Later, Reiko thanks Kimito for planning such a wonderful event for her. But he reveals that Aika is the one who planned all this because she wanted to get along with all the girls. But she let Reiko take her place because she needed it more. Reiko cries and she runs to Kimito's room where Aika is reading a manga. She calls Aika a disgusting person and they get into a fight. Reiko is angry because she always felt guilty about Aika not joining them for no reason. Reiko is also angry because Aika spends so much intimate time with Kimito. On the other hand, Aika is angry because of how Reiko is loved by everyone. Meanwhile, Kimito is just busy simping over their beautiful thighs. Later, Hakua and Karen come and submit their applications to the commoners club. Reiko also gives her application. Aika is against it and they almost get into another fight. Miyuki sees all the girls in his room, so she brings huge scissors to cut his little sausage. But Kimito pulls out pictures of hot men saying that he's a croissant, not a baguette. One day, Kimito wakes up with Hakua sleeping naked next to them. So he quickly puts clothes on her and teaches her how to cook. Then they sit down and do some riddles. Akua's closeness with Kimito gains the negative attention of Reiko, Aika, and Karen. They want Kimito's full attention to themselves, which is understandable given how they're all Sam's. Later, Aika and Reiko are hanging out in Kimito's room while he's not there. They argue for a bit. Suddenly, they spill cola all over their clothes, so they strip. Aika also gets jealous of Reiko's melons, and just for good measure, they slip and fall on top of each other. Kimito sees the whole thing. One day, the school organizes a field trip to a theme park that is specially constructed to look and feel like a normal commoner neighborhood. Since the girls have never been to a normal city, this is a huge deal for them. They don't even know how to cross roads and buy from shops, so Kimito has to guide the girls. They go to a fake McDonald's where they have to carry the food themselves and wait in line. The girls are shocked by the idea of self-service. I mean, with the crap quality that McDonald's has these days, they also find it not worth the time and effort. But the girls learn to get excited by this unique system of independence. Kimito has already trained Aika how to order like a normal person, but she freezes out of fear. Reiko becomes the first person to go up, but she also freezes when she sees the diverse menu. So Kimito goes up and orders some food. Everyone follows his example and gets their food. Next, they go to an arcade where they try the dance machine. The other girls struggle, but Aika is trained for this. She does well and teaches them. The girls are genuinely impressed by her and Aika finally becomes proper friends with them. Later, Kimito sees Karen geeking over a Star Design t-shirt in short shorts. She's hesitant, so Kimito encourages her to wear them. It looks good on her. So good that Kimito can't take his eyes off her beautiful thighs. That night, Aika and Reiko are put in the same room. Aika's busy texting her newfound friends, while Reiko looks on sadly. So Aika asks her to revise an email that she's sending everyone. Reiko gives her some suggestions, and Aika sends them to everyone. The next morning, Aika enjoys breakfast with her new friends, which makes her really happy. Later, Kimito is having a bath, but Aika also comes in. Her friends are coming as well, so she hides him behind her bum. While underwater, Kimito loses consciousness and accidentally grabs another girl's bum. But Aika quickly punches him. The other girls leave for a short break. Aika pulls Kimito out and gives him CPR. One day, Kimito shows them an online compatibility test. They decide to test their compatibilities with Kimito. They start with Aika and everyone is on the edge to hear the score. It's 80 points. And the woman says they would make a fantastic couple. Aika just can't hold back how thrilled she is. Next up is Reiko. It's 90 points and they would be highly suited for marriage. Reiko is happy. Aika is murderous. They do Hakua's test and get 50 points. Neither good nor bad. The mood drops immediately in the room. They do Karen and get zero points. If they're together, then Kimito would die, apparently. But wait, the birthday he put was wrong. It's actually 100 points. Predestined partners. Aika and Reiko just can't accept that, so they pull up other websites that give the results that they want. Meanwhile, Hakua makes a face of Kimito from her food and also makes his plushie. Her maids realize that Hakua wants to be noticed by Kimito, so they decide to get the two together. Later, Kimito tells the girls about maid cafes and how they're popular amongst boys. So the girls put on maid uniforms for him and treat him like their master. My boy is living all our fantasies here. To entertain him, Reiko sings. She has a powerful voice. As in, powerful and destructive. She's like the Jigglypuff of this universe and nearly destroys the entire building. So the real maids clean up the damage. Later, Hakua's maid invites Kimito to Hakua's lab. He gets to see firsthand how she works. Later, she takes him to her sandbox where they play together. The maid sees their interaction and gush over the couple. They follow them wherever they go to fawn over the two of them. 
They force them to eat from the same plate with the same spoon and the same drink. One day, Kimito calls Aiko over to his room and gives her a gift. It's a yellow suit. He says that it's the next step in making her even more popular, showing her a picture of comedian Dandy Sakano and how he's very popular. Also, he tells her to do the pose of Getz, which is slang for having a hard sausage. Aika does as asked, amongst other funny poses as well. Then he's about to tell her that it's all a joke, but she goes away to show the others. Kimito follows her and runs into Miyuki, falling right in between her supple legs. Thankfully, she does not do anything. Aika runs into Reiko and shows off her uniform and Getz pose. Reiko gets sad and jealous, so Aika teaches her as well. By the time Kimito arrives, all the girls are wearing yellow suits and doing the silly Getz pose. One day, Reiko's mother and brother arrive at school and ask to see her and Kimito. Reiko's brother, Masaomi, is overprotective of his sister and he immediately yells at Kimito. But Kimito says that he's only interested in men and puts his hand on Masaomi's shoulder, causing him to get scared. Suddenly, Reiko's mother tells Reiko that they have arranged for her to marry someone from a prestigious family. She'll meet her future husband tomorrow, so she'll be going back home now. Everyone is shocked. Reiko looks at Kimito as if asking for help, but he can't do anything. Kimito is not okay with this. Suddenly, Reiko's brother comes and gives Kimito his email ID. That night, Aika calls Reiko to ask what she'll do. Reiko confirms that she'll honor her mother's wishes and marry the man she chose. But Aika does not want her to leave. She has grown fond of her, even missing their little quarrels. So Reiko also admits that she wants to be at school with him. Aika promises to do something. So they contact Masaomi. Turns out he does not want his sister to get engaged either. They all sneak out of school to break the engagement. Yuki catches them, but she allows them to leave for some reason. The other maids also help her. Masaomi comes to pick them up and they drive away. They reach the mansion of the boy's family, which is guarded by tough security guards. So Karen rushes into battle. Her wild attacks are actually effective against them. Reminds me of that scene in Infinity War. Why was she up there all this time? As for the rest of them, she used her skills to tear away their clothes. Next up is Masaomi's own martial arts instructor. Masaomi holds off his instructor while the rest run in. They're stopped by drones, so Aika uses a broken vase to knock them out. Barricades drop around them, so they go to the control room where Hakua hacks the system and removes the barricades. Next up, mecha battle. It looks bad, but Karen comes in wearing a new uniform. She single-handedly stops the robot, but loses her clothes in the process. Seriously, she's carrying this team hard. Then they finally reach the meeting room. Kimito yells that he's against this marriage because Reiko does not want to be married. But the mother says that Reiko has already accepted her duty, which is something that a commoner like him would not understand. Yes, Kimito says, commoners like him may not understand how high society works, but he does understand that they're all part of the commoners club and they're all friends. They spend time with each other and came to understand each other while sharing happiness and pain. Then Aika asks the mother to consider Reiko's decision and they all do the guest pose as a sign of solidarity. Masaomi also makes the same request. Reiko makes the decision to leave her family, but her mother reminds her that only girls from prestigious families may join Seik in school, so technically, she won't be accepted back into the school. Kimito offers her to come live with him even though he's just a commoner. Reiko accepts. Her parents also accept this arrangement. The family of the possible future husband also accept it graciously. Reiko's mother says that she may marry whomever she likes. She thinks that Kimito just proposed to marry Reiko. Kimito realizes that his wording did sound like that. But there are people against this, like the rest of the girls and Masaomi, who chases Kimito all around the room. Much later, Kimito clears things up with Reiko and her mother, who forgive him for the misunderstanding. Reiko rejoins her family for now and comes back to second school. Things in the Commoners Club go as usual. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.